everyone. Welcome to our next lesson. Just going to adjust my microphone here a little bit so it's a little bit louder. Okay, that's better. All right. Today we're going to be talking about independent events, uh, which will lead to the next lesson. We'll be talking about dependent events, but today we're going to be talking about independent events. So let's do a definition of what independent events are. Okay, so independent events. This is where one event, and if you forget what an event is, then go back to last week and look at your notes. This is where one event does not have an effect an effect on the probability one event does not have an effect on the probability of the other <clears throat> okay so notice we're talking about independent events plural so more than one event is happening Okay, now when they're independent, this means that one event doesn't have any effect on any of the other events. So let's give an example of that so that you are very clear about what this is talking about. Uh, a really good example would be, for example, if I had a die. Okay, here's my dice. Uh, I don't know exactly, I mean, I might be wrong, I don't know if the three is like that or not, I don't know. But here's, here's a die, here's the one, three, and five, okay? So if I pick up the dice and I roll the dice, okay, in a fair, now we're talking about this is a fair dice and it's a random, you know, you're just picking up a dice and you're not using any kind of muscle memory or, you know, you're using some sort of thing to kind of cheat. You're just, you're just rolling a dice, okay? So if I pick up a dice and I roll the dice and I get whatever, right? Let's say I get a four, roll the dice, I get a four. Now, if I pick up the dice again and I roll it again, just because I got a four on the first roll has no effect on what I'm going to roll again. Okay, I, I might roll another four. There's no effect between one roll of the dice and another. How about uh, another example would be, um, how about if you had a coin? Okay, if you had a coin, you know, and there's usually what we call heads on one side. Uh, and some sort of picture on the other. I don't know. Here's I don't even know what I'm drawing here. I have no idea. Okay, so you know you you got a coin. One side has heads. There's usually like a big giant face on one side. You know, with the hair or whatever. Okay, so we got heads and tails, right? We got heads or tails of a coin. Now, if I pick up a coin and I flip the coin, and I get say tails. Okay, if I pick up the coin again, and again we're talking about you know randomizing, you just pick up the coin, you're doing a random flip of the coin, all right? Because you can train yourself with muscle memory, you can there you can you can cheat, you can take a coin, you can flip it, and get used to flipping it. But we're talking about just randomly flipping a coin. One flip of the coin has no effect on the next flip of the coin. Um, how about another one? Say, how about spinning a wheel? Got some sort of wheel here. It's divided into sections. Maybe you know some are win a prize and some aren't. Whatever, and you spin the wheel. Okay, one spin of the wheel doesn't affect the next spin of the wheel. Okay, so we're talking about events where you're where the two events are not connected to one another. Okay, our next lesson after this later in the week we'll be talking about things that are connected to one another. But right now. We're talking about independent events. <clears throat> our formula. So our formula, the probability, now we're dealing with independent events, so the probability of figuring out, you know, independent events looks like this. We would say P for probability of, let's say, event A, and then I'm going to put this funny symbol here. Let's do it in a different color. We're going to put this symbol right here. It's like an upside down U. We're going to come back to that in just a second. So, probability of A and B. Okay, so what this is saying, 
this little symbol right here, this me it literally means it just means and, okay? And it's like a shorthand way of saying and in math. So the way I read this formula is it says the probability of A and B happening. Okay, now obviously when you use the formula, you're defining what, you know, th these are the desired outcomes that you want. We want A to happen and we want B to happen. What's the probability that both A and B happen? Now the way you calculate it, so when you have an and, this is what you need to remember. So the way that you actually uh, follow through with this formula is you would do the probability of A and whenever you have the word symbol and you got to think multiplication. So it would be the probability of A happening multiplied by the probability of B happening. So when you have independent events you're going to think multiplication. Okay, might want to make a little note about that. So when you have independent when you have independent events, you need to think, oh, that's multiply. Okay, so independent events means we're going to multiply our things together. So let's try doing an actual example. <coughs> let's say that I have a wheel. Okay, let's say I got a wheel here. The wheel is evenly divided into eight different sections. All right, and there's going to be some different colors. Let's do, uh, what do I got here? Let's, well, let's do black for the first one. Okay, so there's, mo there's, there's four of the spots are colored black. Okay, so there's one there, there's one opposite right here, then there's one here, and there's one here. Okay, so there's four black spots, okay? And then let's say that we have some uh, red spots. Let's say that this one's red, this one's red, and let's say this one's red. And then let's say that we had one blue spot on the wheel, it's right here. All right, now let's calculate some probabilities of what's going to happen here. Let's let's figure out what would the probability be. So our question is find the probability. Find the probability of, let's do A, find the probability of this happening. What's the probability that we spin, that we spin a black so we land on black. We spin the wheel and are, you know, at the top, maybe right here, maybe there's a, you know, maybe there's a pointer right here with a little clicker thing that clicks while you spin it. So if we spin the wheel, what's the chance that we spin a black and then spin black again? So I want to know the probability that I spin the wheel, I land on one of these black spots, and then I'm going to spin the wheel a second time, and I need to land on the black spot a second time. So maybe this is some sort of game or something, and to win the game, you need to spin the wheel twice, and you have to land on a black spot two times in a row to win the game. So we want to know what's the probability that that happens. So let's use our formula. So we're, we're, gonna, we're looking at what's the probability that I'm going to say B for landing on black, okay? What's the probability? Well, let's keep our colors consistent here. Okay, so what's the probability B for black, okay? And B for black. So there's my formula. What's the probability of B and B? Well, I know that that is going to be equal to the probability of landing on black, okay, times the probability of landing on black. Okay, so our formula, so remember that when we're doing and, if we have independent events and it's an and situation, then we think, oh yeah, we're multiplying. 
So I'm going to come off to the side over here, <clears throat> and we're just going to figure out what are the chances, what are the chances, what's the probability of landing on a black space? Well, last week, remember, we learned how to do simple probability, a single event probability. So we have, remember, it's our desired, our desired goes on the top over the total possible number of outcomes on the bottom. Well, our desired outcomes, there are four black spaces. So four is the numerator. Now, when we do the bottom, remember, that's the total number of all possible outcomes. Well, how many spots on the wheel are there? So just count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are eight possible outcomes. Well, four out of eight is the same. We can reduce that. That's really one half. Okay, so we know what the probability of landing on a black spot is. So now we're going to plug this into our formula. So that means that the probability of black is one half times one half. Now I know you guys hate fractions, but they're really easy to deal with. You remember when we multiply fractions, you just go across the top and you just go across the bottom. It's that easy. You're just going to multiply across the bottom and multiply across the top. So 1 times 1 is 1 and 2 times 2 is 4. Okay, so you have a 1 in 4 chance. Okay, we could also write that as a decimal. That's 0 0.25 chance or as a percentage that's a 25 percent chance. So we have a 1 in 4 or 25 percent chance of spinning the wheel, landing on black and then spinning the wheel a second time and landing on black again. Let's try a different combination now. So let me erase this because I don't want to erase all my other stuff so I'm just going to get rid of this. Okay, let's try a different combination of events here and see what we get. Okay, so find the probability. We'll call this question B. Okay, let's just, let's make up another one. What's the chance, let's do, let's do something really complicated. What's the chance that I spin a red, then I spin a black, and then I spin, let's make it really difficult, then I spin a blue. Okay? Okay, and it has to be in this order. So maybe this is like a really difficult maybe this is like a you know you could win a hundred dollars you're gonna spit you get to spin the wheel three times you only win if you land on red first then you land on black then you land on blue if you do that maybe you win the game so we're figuring out the probability of R for red and B for black and B for blue Okay, so we want to know what's the probability of red and, uh, oh, I got, let's put BL for blue then, okay? B for black, BL for blue. What's the probability of this happening? Okay, so again, maybe come off to the side. We need to figure out each of these things by themselves. So what's the probability of just landing on a red? Well, you'll notice that there are three red spots on the wheel out of a total of eight spots and that cannot be reduced. So 3 out of 8 is what it's going to be. What about black? We already know what black is. We just figured it out in the previous question. We knew that that worked out to 4 out of 8 or 1 half. What about blue? What's the probability of landing on a blue spot? Well there's only one blue out of 8 possible outcomes. Okay, so we're going to take our three probabilities and then put them into our formula here. So this is going to be equal to the probability of red times the probability of black times the probability of blue. And now just plug in your numbers. So the probability of red is 3 eighths times 1 half times 1 over 8 for the blue. Now remember, like we just did in the other question, all you have to do is multiply across the top, ok, 
Okay, multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom. Okay, that's all you have to do. So, on the numerators, we have 3 times 1 times 1. Well, 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times 1 again is still 3. On the bottom, we have 8 times 2 is 16. And 16 times 8, let me grab my calculator. 16 times 8. It's going to give us 16 times 8. That gives us 128. All right, now does 128 divide by 3? Let's see. It doesn't. It doesn't divide evenly. So we're going to leave it as 3 128s or as a decimal. We could write it as a decimal. As a decimal, it's going to be 0 0.02, and we'll round it, 2, 3. Or we could write that as a percentage. Remember, you'd move it 1, 2. That's a 2.3% chance. So you don't have much of a chance of actually doing this. That's a very small chance. You only have a 2.3% chance of landing on red, then landing on black, and then landing on blue. So that is, that, that's kind of a basic example of how you do them. And now I want to show you one more thing. I want to show you how to make like a, like a flow chart thing. Alright, so let me erase this. And we're gonna look at we're gonna look at this this scenario here. Let's say that I do two flips. Two flips of a coin. Alright, and then we're gonna find we're gonna find some probability. Find the probability find the probability that let's say part A that both flips both flips are heads okay and then once we figure that out we're going to answer the question B that and watch the wording here at least one flip is a tail. Notice the wording there, at least one flip is a tail. So to help us do this, we're going to make a little like flow chart. Now this is very simplistic, but I really need you guys, you're going to have to learn to work through this, okay? Especially when we get to, um, you know, conditional probabilities and dependent events and stuff. This is, this is very simplistic, but you need to learn how to do this. I know it looks, this is going to look really like simplistic, but please, please go through this with me, okay? So we're going to look at the first flip. This is the first flip. So we're flipping the coin. One of two things can happen on the first flip, right? There's only two choices. You're going to flip the coin. So we got two branches in our tree. This is called a tree diagram. Okay, we got two branches. One of two things are going to happen when we flip this thing. Either we're going to get land on heads or we're going to land on tails. There's no other choice. Okay, we're going to flip the coin. Either it lands on heads or it lands on tails. Now we're doing two flips of the coin. So we're going to pick up the coin and flip it again. Well, it might have landed on heads. So it's going to branch two times again from each of these possibilities. Okay, now I might have got I, on the first flip, I might have gotten heads. On the second flip, I might have gotten heads again. Or it might have landed on tails. The same thing can happen down here. Maybe on the first flip, maybe it landed on tails. I pick up the coin, I flip it again. It could still land on heads or might land on tail. Okay, so here's your here's your 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 diagram. This is the first flip, and then obviously right here, this represents this section over here is the second flip. Okay. <clears throat> now, what you want to do is now summarize. So oh, let's use a different color. Summarize what happened on each path that you can follow. You see the different paths you can follow to get through this. So 
let's summarize how we got to each one. So the way we got to this one was we flipped a heads, then we flipped heads again. So we're going to call that H, H. That's how we got to this one right here. How did we get to this spot right here? Well, we had to go heads, then tails. So we're going to separate, we're going to write that as heads, then tails. How did we get to this one right here? How did we get to that H right there? Well, we had to flip tails, then heads, tails, then heads. What about the last one? How did we get to that one there? We had to flip tails, then we had to flip tails again. Now, if you, if you make the diagram and you write down all the possible outcomes right here, this does all the work for you. So we're just going to use this to answer our question instead of using a formula. <coughs> okay, so remember that A, part A, asked us what's the probability that both flips are heads? Okay, so probability that both, both heads. Okay, what's the probability of getting both heads? Well, look at your summary. How many of them are both heads? Only this one right here, right? That's the only one that is heads, heads. So <clears throat> there was one way that that could happen. How many total outcomes were there? Well, there was one, two, three, Four. There's four total outcomes that could have happened, so there's a one in four chance of both heads, or that's a 25% chance. Okay, what about part B? Because it has that language, the question says, at least, at least one tail. So we're going to go through our we're going to go through our four outcomes and we're going to look at ones that have at least one tail. Well, which ones had at least one tail? Okay, the first one doesn't. That's heads heads. It doesn't. The second one did. It had heads then tails. So it had one tail. The third probability had tails then heads. That has at least one tail, right? Now, what about number 4? That's the one you might miss. Does tails, tails have at least one tail? Yes, it has at least one tail. So we have to count that as one of the ways to get at least one tail. So that's one, two, three. So the probability of getting at least one tail, there are three ways that can happen out of four total outcomes, or that is a 75% chance. Okay, now you could do that. Now, you you could do this mathematically. I use the chart to answer these questions to get this one out of four, three out of four. Just, but just to show you, you know, your formula still works. You could have said the probability of heads and the probability of heads, right? The probability of getting a head on a on a on a just a one toss of the coin is one out of two, right? You have a one in two chance of flipping a head multiplied by 1 over 2, and you'll see you get the same answer. 1 times 1 is 1, 2 times 2 is 4, and that matches the answer we had when we did it the other way. So you can still use the form if you want, or you can make a branching diagram and use your outcomes to just plot what your, what your answer is. Okay, so we're only dealing with independent events for this uh, Monday or Tuesday lesson, depending on which day you look at this. Um, and that's it. I uh, just have one announcement just to make just for especially for my seniors so seniors okay seniors you are done on May the 15th this is a Friday so this is the way it's going to work for no matter what course you're in not just my course but for all the courses you're in so when you complete at the end of the day on Friday, you need to make sure that you are done. Whatever work in the class that you're doing, whatever work was assigned to you be, to be done by that Friday, have it all done. When you are complete your work on that Friday, you are done. You do not have to do any more school. You don't have to log on Monday. You don't need to log in and worry about anything in any of your courses. You're done. 
whatever grade, so your grade, whatever grade you had on May the 15th, Okay, whatever grade is in the grade book on May 15th, that's what goes in skyward. Okay, as your final grade. Okay, so your final whatever whatever so for me, your your I'll have a couple assignments due that Friday uh, in class. You're going to finish those assignments, get them in the grade book on that Friday, and then that whatever it says Whatever your grade says on that day, that's your final grade in my class for that day. Okay. The, unfortunately, if you're not a senior, the rest of you, you have two more weeks to go after that. But seniors, you are done May 15th. Whatever's in the grade book on May 15th is your final grade. Okay. All right. So uh, check the classwork, uh, which I'll have posted right below this video. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to be questions one to four and question number seven. And it's on page, not that you need to know the page, but it's on page 317. I'll have a link posted that on the thing. So as usual, do the classwork. I will have a short quiz that asks you some of the specific answers to these questions. And that's how we'll get a grade in the grade book for classwork. All right, so I hope you're all having a, have a good week this week. We're almost done, one month to go. Uh, that's all I have for you today. So I'll see you Wednesday or Thursday. Bye.